a very good evening to you all. Welcome to our Monday evening live session on the Ecology Training, well, Ecology Academy uh, website and the Ecology Academy uh, Facebook group. So if I could say that properly, Wildwood Ecology Training Academy. Soon though, we've got some announcements to make for this evening session. So do stay tuned for that. So we've got some uh, announcements to make. Now, um, this evening session is going to be really great uh, in terms of um, its content. So we've got some, I've got some great tips for you if you're in your, just about to approach your first bat survey season. If you're in going to be your second or third or even more. Uh, so if, you, if you're a veteran as well, hopefully you'll get to a couple of um, sort of pointers here. And also, if you are a veteran of um, the bat survey season, feel free to put in your comments below and help uh, others within this group as well. So we're all here to learn and hopefully we will be able to advance your knowledge, understanding of bat surveys within the UK um, and also how to get the most out of your experience, how to develop your own skills, your knowledge, understanding of bat ecology, behavior, evolution, their understanding of uh, habitats, the species themselves, uh, in order to help you advise upon legislation and um, your clients if you are as an ecological consultant, for instance. So um, that's what this evening session is all about. Clearly, this is a Facebook Live video and it will be recorded and available for you to watch or replay at your leisure. So um, hopefully that's going to be um, of value to you. I will also be uploading these to our, our exclusive Dipper Club as well with some extra content uh, for those who are members of the Dipper Club. So there is a feature link uh, available on this evening session. So if you want to have that additional content, please do click on the link and follow it to the Dipper Club, which is on our um, platform there. So um, you'll be able to uh, download um, content such as you know, the bat licenses, um, also information about how to obtain them, and there's a whole host, that, that's for just for this evening, and there's a whole host of other things on there, such as um, um, there's a lot of these uh, recordings are on there. There are a couple of um, podcasts which we recorded last year, and um, I would say we've got a couple more announcements of what we're going to be looking at and recording for this year as well. So um, hopefully that will be of interest to you all. So without further ado, uh, we will start with uh, welcome messages. Okay, so if you are here for, the, for your first time, if you're here for your second time, if you've been actually a vivid watcher of all these Facebook lives, please do put a comment in and um, um, I should try and re reply back as soon as I can. Again, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get a grip with um, this Facebook live um, itself because um, sometimes it um, I am not allowed to see the comments weirdly uh, as we as we go along. But um, um, if there are comments at the end and this video ends, I will try to answer them before I leave this evening. Okay. So um, I say, just do uh, mention, just do drop in um, a, a comment about where you are. If you've got any wins for the past uh, couple of weeks, really. So we do these Facebook live sessions every two weeks. Just a heads up. Now I know there's um, I can, I, on my screen I can see there is one person watching us live, so fantastic! Thank you for sticking with me uh, for this uh, the live session. There may be a couple of more people that join us along, so we've got to two now, so we've doubled we've doubled the number of um, live participants already. That's fantastic! And just in the space of uh, well less than three uh, four minutes, brilliant. So um, I, I'm doing these live sessions on a Monday evening at seven p.m. Now that was at the request of yourself, so I I always I just I. Um, try to ascertain when the best time to undertake these sessions um, would be, when most people would be active. And um, uh, it seems that, that we're averaging a, a very small number uh, of people, so the more people that um, we get, uh, so much the better. Um, but I, I may be shifting these across again, because it doesn't look like we're getting many, and um, I must admit 7pm is not a great time for me, but it works for you guys. So. Um, um, so you know we, we've been sticking with we've, we've, we've been st sticking with it for the past couple of months since the start of this year. Um, so um, I'm going to go on for for May, but after May, I'll probably be reducing it to a sort of um, a different time and maybe a different date too. So just to help uh, me out during the bat survey season. So if that is a real issue for you, please do let me know and we'll, we'll look at either keeping it here 
or maybe it should be across. But um, it was something we looked at um, a, um, last year. So it undertook a poll about the best time and frequency of these. And Monday at 7 p.m. seemed to be the best time. So um, uh, uh, I want to make sure that is still correct. And uh, also maximizing my, my time as well yeah, delivering these messages. Because I know a lot of you can also watch these live recordings uh, on, on our Facebook group too. So, um, but say, Please do feel free to uh, put in the comments about what you've achieved in the past couple of weeks and uh, any wins, any sort of employment um, wins at all, any promotion wins, something like this, um, any gains uh, you've, you've learned, anything you've learned in the past couple of weeks, knowledge, understanding, fact, you know, if you have, great, put those down, please. Um, be good to actually uh, read about those. Um, also, let's have a look. I'm just going to change the setting here. Here we go. Um, and, and there, there we go. I can't see those. So, um, oh yeah, here's the feature link. There we go. So I've just um, I've just um, shown you the feature link to that um, Zipper Club itself there. So you got that. So this evening session is all about bat licensing uh, and how. To, well, not sorry, it's not about bat licensing. It's how to get the most out of your survey season as a ecologist, as a bat ecologist. And we're going to run through these in terms of looking at your first year. So what could you expect to achieve in your first year? And also uh, onward then in terms of years two, three and onward, really. Now, uh, some of these are going to merge in. You know, you may be able to achieve all of what I'm going to talk about this evening in your first year. OK, so you may be able to achieve it all. But what have you actually learned in terms of, you know, gaining that um, deep level of understanding? And some of you will uh, some of you will be able to gain that deep understanding and then become a great bat ecologist and um, help bat conservation across uh, the UK or beyond if you're listening to, to us outside of the UK. I know we have a couple of people from the Netherlands uh, here uh, and also from the USA. Uh, we've had a couple of people from the USA uh, joining us and Canada too. So uh, if you're any, anywhere else, please do feel free to mention where you're from uh, and uh, I'll try and give a shout out to you ne next time. Okay. A couple of announcements before we go on to the bat part of the of this evening's theme. So that that includes the how to um, you know we'll be looking at how to get that license, but also other areas where you don't need a license. There are a lot of areas that you can improve upon um, without the need for a license. So we'll be looking at those in, in, in a few minutes. A couple of announcements to make though, as we just before we start, and that is about the Wildwood Ecology Training Academy. Or, um, Facebook page and also the name Wildwood Ecology Training Academy. Okay, so we got a special announcement to make that um, we will be changing the name and we will be dropping the Wildwood Ecology bit, um, but we, we're going to Ecology uh, Academy. So we're going to be looking at the Ecology Academy, and the Ecology Academy is all about supporting people within our industry, the ecological industry, looking at how we can support them right from grassroots before anyone starts, you know, it could be, you know, you're thinking about uh, A-levels in a, an environmental field. Uh, it could be that you're looking at your first degree, uh, whether you, know, you take a degree, where you should, um, you know, which courses are offered at different universities. We're looking into supporting people that have just graduated from a university. People who are looking to uh, secure their first job in a role as an ecologist, but also onward journeys as well in terms of supporting ecologists throughout their working, um, you know, and, and their, throughout their careers. You know, looking at um, you know the early stage ecologists, the junior ecologists, what they need to do, and what can, what employers should be looking out for as well. So we're looking at both from the employee point of view, but also the employer's point of view too. So we'll be looking at different details and um, uh, so aspects from the employer and the employee's point of view, bringing in some great you know, best practice. We're also um, you know, supporting those in their advanced stages of their career as well. So that's not, you know, so you may be a senior or a principal level ecologist or an associate director or a director, um, there'll be something for you too. So they you know very much seen as a sort of um, one stop shop for uh, uh, all ecologists. Now, clearly, this is work in progress, and we were very much guided about what you want this to actually. Um, look like. So um, we, once we start launching our website, which will be ecologyacademy.co.uk, 
So we'll be looking at that. I will confirm that. That is ecologyacademy.co.uk, where it's not just .com. I'll confirm that a bit later on. Uh, but we sh on, on that website will be a pool of re free resources for you to use uh, to help you um, de develop your career as an ecologist. Uh, and, it and also uh, we we'll be also putting on our training uh, website uh, um, uh, courses on there too. Uh, as I say, we'll be then much directed about what you want. So it's not just about bats and protected species as such. It's all about ecology and ecologists. So if there's something that you're unsure of, that so you know your some of these Facebook lives, you know, I've just been looking at the sort of um, figures that people watch, and you know, it's looking at um, you know the induction process. You know, we're looking at what to expect during your first few weeks as an ecologist. That was quite a popular one. Uh, we're looking at um, elements of the training. So how to create a training plan? What you should be looking at for promotion? What's best practice within our industry? So we'll be tackling these up on the website. But also, we will be launching a podcast, which we are in the process of putting together. Now, there's a couple of um, trailers on, on the Dipper website there. So a couple of recordings there with uh, two people um, there. So, um, you know, feel if you, if you want to have a look at the Dipper um, Club itself, um, it's, a, it's a subscription based um, uh, portal. There. So you, you get three three free months of a trial, so you don't need to pay at all. Uh, so, you, you know, uh, so you won't pay a single penny. So if you want to cancel after after two months, you know, you've got two months worth of free access and uh, you can very much, um, you know, opt out if it's not for you. Um, but um, it's there as a, as a great resource for um, ecologists um, and uh, it's going to get better, I think. You know, we can we can just put add things on there, and I've put a few things in here relating to this evening about bat licensing. I need to update it a bit more. Um, there's, there's things on there for about England at the moment, but there's nothing about Wales, Scotland, or Northern Ireland. Uh, so we just focus on the UK areas there. So um, that's what we got planned. So uh, watch out for Ecology Academy uh, coming um, along shortly, which will replace, not, yeah, you'll see some subtle differences on this page itself. So, um, you know, we'd be myself and uh, a couple of other people we will be looking at uh, uh, providing resources there. So the podcast itself, we've got a few people lined up for that podcast. I won't give any spoilers just in case uh, anyone pulls out, but I've got, we've got some big names. <laughs> so if you're in the ecology field, you'll know uh, who these people are, certainly. And um, I'm looking forward to interviewing those people. So we've got three interviews lined up. Um, and I say we're recording these, but um, they won't go out until June 2021. So just make sure I've got enough content there to keep you occupied and also to do complete the editing uh, part of it as well. So there, there won't be so rough around the edges, edges, shall we say. Okay, so those, I'm quite excited. I mean, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a great few months, really. Uh, looking forward to actually getting a bit more serious about the Ecology Academy website and um, supporting everyone within our industry as well. So there's some great people out there who, who do some amazing things for ecologists and we'll be bringing those um, people onto the website, uh, onto our podcast, the uh, interviews, and also maybe their resources upon our website too, um, in one, I say this HubSpot here. So careers guidance. If there's anything you want, please do let me know. Okay, so that's enough rambling for the, the first um, the first 13 or 14 minutes of, of this um, session. So what I wanna do um, this evening then is just to discuss a little bit or talk about, about what I think is my personal opinion. now about um, what to, what's best to gain from your, you know, your first couple of years as a, um, when you start to get into bats. Now, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background experience about my experience of how I started into, uh, into, into bat um, surveys and getting into bat ecology and, um, and so forth. So, and, and my role as an ecologist too. So my, my certainly my interest really stems back from university. I completed a degree, a zoology degree at Cardiff University, arguably the best university in the world, clearly. Yeah. So uh, I completed the zoology degree um, at that there, and I was fortunate enough to actually be living with a couple of people who worked for what was known as then as the Countryside Council for Wales, now Natural Resources Wales. And um, a couple of those people, informed me that there was a position there for a species officer and I, uh, for, for, uh, who would provide advice, uh, helpline advice um, to members of the public in Wales. 
and uh, about protected species. It wasn't just about bats, it was about protected species as a whole, so you know, uh, snakes, um, and uh, it was, that was the second one, badgers and so forth. Any, any sort of licensing issues we sort of dealt with as the species team there. So this is back in 2000, um, so I finished my degree, uh, sorry, I finished my last exam uh, on a Monday, uh, had the interview on the Tuesday, and then the following week, and then I started work for the um, uh, uh, Countryside Council for Wales. So it was a rapid turnover, um, uh, you know, um, there. And that's why I got into bats. Um, so that was the first time going out with them, shadowing a few people. And what did I learn in my first year with them, uh, with, the, with uh, the Countryside Council for Wales, now Natural Resources Wales? Well, first of all, it, it, was, it was getting used to um, a different language in terms of, not, and I'm not, not about the Welsh language, I'm all about um, you know protected species, the legislation. You know, it's something that um, at university you get taught about legislation, but yeah, you may not really take that much interest or uh, in it at all. And then all of a sudden, when you're faced with reality in terms of it's part of your job about um, patent licensing and also about the legislation and advising members of the public about um, what they can do and what they can't do um, um, lawfully. So cl clearly, I had to increase dramatically my knowledge and understanding of wildlife legislation. So that was the first part. So I think in your first year, you're gonna be, it's, it's gonna be looking at the wildlife legislation, really getting to grips with it, because it keeps changing, you know, it, well, certain elements change, should I say. So, you know, this is back in 2000, you know, we're, now we're on the 2017, you know, or the conservation and regulations of, conservation of habitats and regula species regulations, 2017 as amended. Um, so we're very much um, looking at that. So think, a few things have changed since 2000 there, but clearly we have the 1981 Wildlife and Countryside Act we need to, to look at. And so when we're advising members of the public, we need to take into account both the, you know, all the different pieces of legislation there and also local um, <clears throat> uh, planning policy if, they, if, any, if any advice was related to uh, planning and development. So if that is, say, seems like, well, I'll be going into a field where I will need to provide advice of some sort, whether that be you know, through legislation or whether it be through planning policy, those are key skills and more knowledge to actually obtain, all right? So you will need to actually keep yourself updated on uh, each year, so maybe years one, two, and three. In, fra in fact, for the rest of your ecological career, you, know, you need to keep updated on uh, wildlife legislation. So that's one thing I would say is that get used to that. Just start off now. Yeah, you may not fully understand it, but the more you get into it and you hear more people advising about things, the, the easier it gets in one way, and yet also the more complex it gets. And this is this happens in any sort of training environment. So we have a certain amount of knowledge, and our knowledge increases, increases rapidly. It's this curve hockey stick, all of a sudden it's going right up there, and all of a sudden we think we know everything there is to know about any you know legislation, anything to know about bat ecology, anything to know about technology, whatever it is. We get to a plateau, and all of a sudden you know we start to not tail off, but take, um, not dip down. You know, it's unlearning, which is very difficult to do. But our, our knowledge slows down, and it's only sort of incre slow incremental levels of our knowledge as it increases uh, as we go on through time. Um, and sometimes our confidence dips because we thought we knew about a particular subject, whether it be legislation or planning policy, and all of a sudden something comes to hit us, you know, sideline us, and think, actually, do I really fully understand it now? Because someone's mentioned this, and looking into it, they may be right, and all of a sudden your confidence dips down. And then it's reinforced again with another bit of legislation or another bit of advice, or you talk to a colleague, and it comes back up again. And this is where this sort of um, up and down, this flow, this ebb and flow of knowledge and understanding. And it's, it's a natural part of how we learn. Because we can be blinkered about our, you know, we can just stay in our bubble and just focus upon, you know, our, our, our two media outlets. Um, uh, of, of knowledge and or, or points of wisdom and follow those to the you know uh, uh, always or we can also seek to be a bit more open-minded to go out and look at different journals go and look at um, different uh, pieces talk to different people opinions and um, you know you may not necessarily need to agree with those people's opinions 
but um, I think it's just it's better for your broader knowledge and understanding to have those different expressions of opinion. All right. So I think be open minded is another part of your year one um, sort of studying. So, um, you know, making sure that, yes, you've got the, the relevant documents, you know, uh, the, so if you wildlife legislation, for instance, you'd be going to legislation.gov.uk. Uh, to actually download those pieces of you know, the right pieces of legislation for your country, so um, that's obviously within the UK um, that that website itself. Um, so that's the legislation. So I really start off with looking at that, and it's a bit boring, I'm sure, but you know clearly you're not going to spend weeks doing it, but dipping into it now and again, understanding what bits are unlawful. So you know why you know why are we why do you, you know you, most people know they need a bat license to go and survey for bats. But why do you need a bat license to go and survey for bats? Okay, so if, you know, there's lots of things, as I said, you can do without under, without the need for a, a bat license, whether it be England, Scotland, Northern Ireland or Wales, okay? So just find out why you need those that bat survey license. And, and it's not the, you know, the end or, you know, there's a lot of things you can do without one. But find out, you know, if, so you may start from that point, I need a bat license to do bat survey work. So, uh, what I would encourage you to do is, I say that legislation, look look at why bats are protected, why, what elements are unlawful, and, and just research that. Because that will then influence about, so if it's something, if a bat license is something that you think you, you will need at some point, and you're going to be working towards it, and which is a very, I think most people working in bat ecology, and, and, and other, obviously, you know, other protected species, would be working towards some protected species license. So my next piece of advice to you is to seek out, go to the relevant licensing body's website and look at their license application forms. Okay, and I'm just going to use England as an example. Um, on the Dipper Club, we'd also put in different parts of the, the um, um, different parts of the UK too. But as, as, uh, as an example for, for England, um, you know, you'll be going to the Natural England website and um, if you go onto there, you'll see these different licenses, and they will say level one, level two, level three, level four. So, and that will be like class 17, 18, 19, 20. They're the same. So, class uh, level one is your class 17, class level two is your class 18, and so forth. Okay, up to 20. So, what do these actually permit? So, if, if you're thinking about obtaining a bat license, you're probably going to be looking at level one and possibly level two. Go to the Natural England website and have a look at the license itself. It's free. It's you know it's it's, free, obviously. it's it's you know download it. Have a look at it. You know it doesn't does you not you don't get a license just by downloading it. By the way, um, so you know don't think it's just as easy as downloading a piece of paper. You know PDF. Sorry, from uh, that from website. Have a look at it. Have a look at what the class these class licenses entail. In terms of the conditions, so I mean, it's 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 interesting. I, I have I've held I've held a bat license in England for uh, you know over over ten years now, uh, even so you know longer for 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 Wales, and um, it's really interesting to go back, or you know we just print these off or save them to our and our, our computers. Uh, and not really look at them other than know that, okay, the date says from the 1st of January 2021 to the 31st of December 2021. But it's interesting to go through them and have a look at some of the conditions. So it, it will mention about the legislation, for instance, and the licensing terms and conditions and what the, per, what the license permits. So just to read this out, just so I am actually 100% correct. Um, so this is for the level one or class 17 license from Natural England available on, the, um, on their website. So what the license permits for a level one, class 17, is to disturb bats, and these are all species, you can disturb, you know, for, for the license covers you to disturb all species, and use artificial light, such as a torch, but not an endoscope. Okay, so that's your level one, so you, it's disturbance of all species, doesn't, doesn't differentiate between horseshoes or anything, you know, it's all species of bat, a chiroptera, uh, and the use of artificial light, such as a torch, but not an endoscope. Okay, so that's one thing you're thinking, okay, well, that's the level. So it's interesting, you know, you need to know what you'd be permitted to do. So if, if you're interested in endoscope work, you know, particularly for tree work, for instance, you may not be looking at a level one license. You need to be targeting 
a level two or above license, a level two license. Okay, so um, so have a look at that and look at who can also be recorded on your license. So when you first start off with a license itself, um, you know you probably won't be able to use assistance or accredited agents. So there's different terminology coming in here. You know you need to know what. Uh, an accredited agent is what, what, what we're using an accredited agent it's not, it's not going to add to James Bond or anything like that but you know you look, look and get what an accredited agent can do are you an accredited agent and you have an understanding of what you, that means for you you may be an accredited agent under another person's license you may be an assistant so what other things that you can do as an assistant or when should you get this license when can you start employing accredited agents and assistants and it's usually about after three years so don't think you just have, it's a bit like a driving test, you know, don't think once you've got your license, you, you, that's it, you can do anything you like. There are certain things that may be restricted and certainly one of those is the application of bat mitigation licenses for development uh, and also the use of accredited agents and assistance on your license. So just, just be aware of that and list all the different licenses and this legis legislation. But one thing to look at, and this is really interesting, is the license conditions. So, uh, so I'm, just, I'm just going to give a few of these license conditions uh, out uh, for uh, the class 17 or level one license. So the first one is that um, if you if you're acting under this license, okay, you, you need to be uh, you need to have relevant. You know, you have to refer back to certain pieces of guidance. You know, you have to not adhere to it, but um, you know, you know, be involved and certainly um, understand and review. So if you haven't got the following documents. Uh, this is maybe part of your list of actions to undertake in the next year. Okay, uh, is you'll need a copy of the Bat Workers Manual. Now, this is I think it was 1994. No, I, I could be wrong, you know, but it's it's an old, uh, it's a really quite an, an old manual. You know, the Bat Workers Manual. You know, that's uh, I think it's, we're on the third. I think it's the third edition uh, now. So uh, with that one, so it, it's uh, I think it's what in orange cover. So make sure you you know you've got a copy of that. And you can you've you've read it because that's a great source of information. If you if you're for, you know, if you're new to bat ecology, get a copy of the bat workers manual. I think it I think it's free to download. I may be wrong on that, but it's a you know I it's been a while since I've actually you know um, uh, you know needed to have it. You know I've got I've got a copy here in my office. Um, which I, 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 I did have a look at the, the other day about hibernation um, sites and you know and surveying and the uh, also the roost visit form that's there as well which is quite useful to, uh, to, to have a look at. So the bat workers you need to have a copy of the bat workers manual and have a look at that. Now what a couple of other things you may be familiar with as well is that you also need to have a copy and understand and maybe refer to the bat mitigation guidelines. So I think I think this was 2004. I again may be wrong, but uh, 2004 for the bat mitigation mitigation guidelines. So you need to have a look at that. And also, uh, you've probably got a copy of this, but it's mentioned it here: the bat survey guidelines. Okay, so that's the um, I think it's 2016 uh, was the most the third edition um, uh, ones there. So make sure you've got the, the, the most up to date version there. I think there's another version to come out soon. So there's a few things. License condition number one. Um, so persons acting on this license must abide by the most up-to-date iterations of the relevant species guidance. And that includes the Bat Workers Manual, the Bat Mitigation Guidelines and the Bat Survey Guidelines. So if you haven't got those, make sure you do have a copy because they need to make it on your list. And they're great. They're certainly, they're certainly the Bat Workers Manual. I, I think it's a brilliant piece of uh, document, a great document to actually read. Uh, the bat mitigation guidelines takes a while to get into, uh, really. You know, clearly it's about the mitigation. And if it's your first year, yeah, you may not need to know uh, too much about it, especially if you haven't got your license, and certainly if you're not be uh, helping design bat mitigation. Okay, but it's an interesting document to have a uh, look at, and clearly you're more than likely to have a copy of the bat survey guidelines as well. So you know how to undertake surveys, when to undertake surveys equipment needed, training and so forth, you know, covers the uh, bat roost visit, pre or preliminary roost assessments, it looks at potential, uh, potential roost features, PRFs within trees, buildings, structures and other, other uh, yeah, and, yeah, and structures, 
uh, as well as the emergence surveys, when to undertake them, number of surveyors, health and safety, and so forth. You know, so it's a it's a great great guide, uh, guidance there, and that was issued by the Bath Conservation Trust. So you know, other things that are standard, you know, hibernating bats must not be disturbed. So you cannot survey for hibernating bats with a level one class uh, class seventeen license there. Um, you need to be under, familiar with animal welfare legislation. So you may, you may be comfortable with the conservation regulations and the Wildlife and Countryside Act, but if you're taking an animal into care, you know, you've got to look at the, uh, the welfare of that animal itself. So have a look at make sure you are compliant with the animal welfare legislation. Um, that's, that's the Animal Welfare Act of 2006. Look at those things. Uh, and it says here, to use a license, you must be a registered person. So the license itself is one thing, but you also need to be registered with this again with it with England with Natural uh, Natural England. So that's a different application form. I think it's A34. Um, you know the application form there. So in your first, second, maybe third year, you'll be looking at get you know working towards obtaining this license. Now I, I'm I, we fo I'm focused upon licenses. This may not be of any relevance to you. You can go. I'm actually not interested in license. I just want to understand bat survey, bat surveys themselves, and that's just great. But for those of you who are interested in obtaining a license, it is having a look at, you know, particularly for England, the licenses in themselves, have a look at the conditions, uh, but also, of, you know, bef before you have a look at the application form uh, to register as uh, with Natural England. You register with Natural England, you get a, a you know, sort of, a, um, you know, allocated a, a a number, a reference number for you as well that's used once you start submitting your uh, license returns and so forth. And look at the criteria you need to actually obtain that license. And usually it says it will say about um, you know the experience and qualifications you have, uh, whether you're a member of um, SIEM or not or other professional body, um, and also can you demonstrate your knowledge. And so can you demonstrate your knowledge in the form of a log book? Now, going to Wales, there's nothing, nothing on Natural England website, but if you go to Natural Resources Wales and have a look at this, the similar page there in order to obtain your BAT licence um, for, 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 um, for disturbance works and uh, handling BATs within Wales, have a look at the, in there, they actually give you an Excel spreadsheet to download of a log book. So, if you're in England, Scotland, and Wales, uh, Northern Ireland, uh, and you haven't got, you don't know, you think, how do I record, you know, what I've learned in, you know, in, in, in this forthcoming season uh, itself? Go to the Natural Resources Wales webpage, download their logbook, because if you're going to uh, obtain or apply for a license in Wales, you'll be needing to submit this as part of your evidence to Natural Resources Wales of, you know, of your qualification and experience signed off by hopefully a, 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 another license, well, you will be a licensed individual um, and, 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 and will act as your referent, it's, uh, your referee, sorry. So um, my advice then is to download that straight away. You know, if it's your first year or second year and you haven't really been recording things, you may have got a couple of scraps of paper, download the spreadsheet. It's a very simple spreadsheet, it's really, really simple uh, spreadsheet. And you know, you've probably been recording those things already if you haven't downloaded it. But you know it's there. It's free to download. Make use of it, and it will give you guidance in terms of the, your roof survey visits, your bat emergence survey, hibernation um, visits as well. Because remember, bats use different structures. I'm sure you don't need uh, me telling you this. Different structures throughout the year. So you need to be au okay fait with what and when these features will be used. And again, it's about the terminology. So my other tip for uh, going on from the terminology for year one is to have a look at all that. You know, make sure you know what a hibernation, what you know what a day roost is, a night roost, a feeding perch, swarming sites, um, and, and so forth, maternity roost, a nursery roost. These are all words and terms that are used particularly for in, in natural England for licensing purposes. But you need to be okay with you know, what they actually mean. And other licenses will actually give you a description, a glossary uh, of those sort of terms. So that's one thing. Another great area is that um, when you're surveying buildings for bats, you know, you're going out and you may be looking at a barn, you may be looking at a church, a listed building, and maybe you're just a modern house. There are certain architectural features that these buildings and structures will have that 
architects will use and may really relay back to you and saying, okay, well, what, you know, uh, you know, if you if you can talk on the similar terms with them, you know, I think you're doing, you know, you're, you're going great guns, and you know, I think you're you're you're, you're making headway there. But what I would say is download a, a I mean, we, again it's, it's in one of our courses a glossary of architectural terms so if you don't even know what a flying buttress is or maybe a gothic arch or what 19th century uh, building looks like and you know sash windows and um, um, you know dormer windows do you know what a sash window is a dormer window and you know a fenestration what when we talk about fenestration do you know what I'm on you know we're talking about Downpipes. Um, so you know what is UPVC, um, you know, and all these different sort of um, terms itself. You know, coping stones, capstone, keystone. What are all these different sort of terms? You know, and so I think it's a really good idea to download those and just learn a few. You know, it's, it's learning. I say you've learned the language of a you know ecology perhaps, but maybe looking at all these glossary terms for architectural terms too. So uh, that's that, those, those are my sort of. Two top tips, you know. Well, actually, there's a few more there. There, uh, so architectural glossary, as well as downloading the um, class licenses from your relevant statutory nature conservation organisation, having a look at what's required and working backwards to see what you need to obtain. Okay, so you know in that way, but don't get too hooked up on just conforming to the you know the license requirements. There's a whole gamut of other areas that you should get involved with, and it all depends on what you're interested in. So I'm just going to list a few things now here, which I think you should, you know, you know I've really enjoyed learning as I'm going along and, and you, you always learn, you know, you, you're constantly learning yourself. So I would also look at starting to build up your BAT ID skills. And if you can, yeah, well, you know, I've, I've looked at a book and I know, I know what BATs are, you know, BATs are and I know what they are, you know, I, I, you know, I can name all the 18 different species. Hopefully it won't be, it may be down to 17 species soon. Oh dear. Uh, so we know, in, in, you know, look, looking at them, you know, the different species we have within the UK, and if, you, if you're in certain parts of the UK, whether or not you're going to get migrant species coming across as well. So you may have resident breeding species, but look at what other species may crop up now and again, as it could be on the south coast. Um, so looking at your bat ID skills, and this bat ID skills covers a lot of different areas. So yeah, it may cover the use of technology, so bat detectors. Do you have, a, in your, if you're in your first year of bat surveying, you may not have a bat detector. So there's things you can do without a bat detector. And that is, you know, clearly you can go and see, and you can watch bats in the twilight, and certain species you'd be able to see, and certain species you probably won't be able to see uh, when they're silhouetted against the sky. So just, have a look, just having a look at the simple formation, the, the sort of silhouetting of bats, look at the behavior. You know, and this is covered, this is, these are really, really basic points that are covered on the National Bat Monitoring Program, uh, which is free, by the way. So if you want to go to bats.org.uk and have a look at their website, there's some training courses just come up. I, I completed the level one. I, I presented a, a free course um, last, uh, last Wednesday for Bat Conservation Trust on their level one uh, National Bat Monitoring Program, uh, the Waterway Survey. So we focused up on there, just looking at introducing species. We don't need to look at all 18 different species. We're going to focus, we, you know, the focusing on that for the waterway survey was two different, well, pipistrels and the Dorbentons bat. Okay, so we just looked at how you separate out pipistrels from Dorbentons or myotis, uh, and, and looking at those. So they're looking at not just how well, how they sound on a bat detector, and that whether whether your bat detector is a heterodyne, time expansion, whether it's full spectrum, whether that's active or passive, whether it's frequency division or zero crossing. Now again, glossary terms, you know. I've just mentioned a, a hop, just reeled off a host of terms there. If you don't know what those are, go and have a look at them. You know what they actually mean. You know what does full spectrum mean? What's the difference between full spectrum, zero crossing, and frequency division, heterodyne? You know these are probably new terms if you're in your year one, and you may be familiar with one or two of those terms, but maybe not all. What do we mean by passive, um, uh, full spectrum, or, or um, you know, or, or you know, active? Uh, what does that mean? Yeah, so just have a look at the, what, what those those actually do. So, um, yeah, we can use bat detectors. Clearly, you know, it will help us hear the bats. But some bats will not echolocate, or if they're not very directional, for instance, you may be missing a few species. So, so don't just rely upon uh, auditory. You know, so we're looking at visual uh, cues as well. So looking at the bat behaviour. Um, so these are the sort of things to get into your head. Looking at training, you're training your sonic memory in terms of the bat acoustics. 
and wearing headphones, really great tip to wear headphones with your back protector, saves the battery, but also aids your sonic memory for the, for the back cause. But also look at the visual clues. Where is the bat located? Is it in a woodland? Is it in across a river? What's it doing? Is it skimming across the water? Is it flying around the hedgerows? Is it erratic or is it flying in a straight line? You know, look at these things. What, what, what size is it as well? What it, it can see? And look at the, how it, it, look, looking at the bat themselves. What time did you, have you encountered this? Uh, you know, is it early on in the evening or is it, uh, you know, if you're walking home quite late, you know, you know, you know, what, you know what time is it really? Uh, so, you know, all these different elements, all these different cues, really, you can have. Uh, so, yeah, watching. And another thing about, you know, if you've got a bat detector and you're watching bat, I mean, we can get really what's known as dial fixation. And this is, you know, we don't mean use a, you may use a dial and a heterodyne moving up and down. Um, but there's also those LED screens. And as the, and it, as the night gets darker as well, you know, we get fixated upon the screen. We're looking at the numbers. We've got 25, 45, 55 and so forth. But we forget to actually maybe put the detector down slightly and just concentrate on looking round. And I think that's one of the most important parts. Enjoy actually the experience of watching the, the bats uh, themselves. And if you've got the opportunity, if it's non-commercial, uh, you know, and uh, or it's not going to det be detrimental to a survey, for instance, you may want to switch off that bat detector and just watch the watch the uh, watch the bat flying around. Look at the behaviour of itself. So get into groups with the different types of behavior, you know, aerial hawking, gleaning, um, you know, slow, slow, you know, slow aerial hawking and, and so forth. Or is it, a, you know, what's the, what's the actually behavior? Is it one bat or is another bat chasing each other as well? What is it, and if you are using the bat detector then, what are those sounds you're listening to? Are they actually the true representation calls of that bat? Or, you know, actually, are they social calls? If you don't know what social calls are, you know, you know, it's a great learning opportunity to find out what they are. Why does a bat echolocate at you know different frequencies? You know, why does a pipistrelle drop from 45 kilohertz as common pipistrelle down to about you know 20 kilohertz when he's doing social calls? And what do they sound like? If you can record them as well, those calls, record them, play them back, listen to them, uh, uh, listen back, listen back to them as well. And if you've got the opportunity to use sonogram analysis, another technical term for you. So sonogram analysis, what program do you need? Is there a free program you can download and, and use? What equipment do I need? Is it just a mere, you know, just use the bat detector itself? Can I plug it into some sort of recording device? Uh, if not, you know, if, if you, for instance, if you've got like the Echo Meter Touch Pro, you know, it will record it all onto a smartphone itself, uh, whether it be, you know, that Android or iPhone. So just looking at those different areas to, as well. And, um, I think that's, you know, we could go on and on in terms of what to learn, but I think the most important parts is gaining that knowledge, building up slowly and understanding into a, into a really great depth because each year you can go back and learn a little bit more. Okay, it's a bit like my my botanical friends that they, they get so engrossed when it comes to April, when it, well, a little bit before, when they're starting to survey for their, you know, their target plants for monitoring purposes, you get a little bit rusty. You know, you think, oh my word, I forgot what all the grasses are. And it's a bit like that with uh, clearly with, with, with bats as well. That you know, we start the season, we get a little bit rusty, going, oh well, I forgot my torch, I forgot my bat detector, I forgot to put the batteries in um, itself, or I've left the batteries in and the whole thing's gone rusty. It does happen. So tip in uh, the winter time is to remove your battery uh, from the bat detector. Um, it, it, it is just gaining little bits of experience frequently, you know, or little and often. I think is that is the word, you know, sort of. Um, what I'd, your takeaway message from this is little and often, you know, get, get a little bit of knowledge, implement it, get a little bit more knowledge and just incremental gains as you go throughout the season. And the season really, I mean, in terms of the ecological survey season, we know we're going to start, well, we're going to start this week in terms of some surveys. But yeah, from now all the way until the sort of end of September, you've got to you know, make the great gains in terms of your own knowledge and experience. Um, and uh, you know, and, and therefore start that learning process. Get the recording down uh, in terms of your logbook. Uh, if you want to go into that bat license itself, uh, itself. Uh, uh, yeah, I've just repeated myself itself again. So uh, hopefully that was uh, of interest to you. I say there's be a little bit more information upon our website uh, itself. So if you go to, if you follow the link itself to our Wildwood. At the moment it's called Wildwood Ecology Training. Uh, website, and as I said at that right at the start, we've got a couple of new people, is that uh, we will be shifting to Ecology Academy 
um.co.uk they're relatively shortly so that'll be happening in may and then the podcast released in june so just watch out for that um, um on our website itself so hopefully that's been of use to yourself uh, yourselves um, if you think of any tips at all that I may have missed, you can ask, you know, actually I really benefited from my first year as a bat ecologist or bat surveyor. I, I, you know, I'd recommend this book, I'd recommend, you know, and so forth. You know, please put those in the comments. It all adds up to our own, you know, knowledge. We're all here to help each other uh, uh, get on and advance and, you know, get, get the most from our, you know, enjoy what we do. So hopefully that's been of interest. Uh, look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks' time. But for all... Uh, for now, take care. Goodbye.